So now let's move from the data access to the analysis and visualization part. So when we're talking about data analysis, once you've read the data and you bring it in, you're oftentimes going to have to do some cleaning up. We've added a ton of capability around the idea of pre-processing. So that has specifically, I want to call out things like missing data, outliers, smoothing it. Maybe you want to do some low-pass filtering of your data. Uh, and so there's, there's a bunch of off-the-shelf functions now, which I've shown here in the pre-process section, that do exactly that. Additionally, working with groups tends to be something we do all the time. So we've added a lot of capability around working with groups and dealing with groups inside of larger data sets. So let's take a, a peek at this a little bit. So um, specifically, I want to call out fill missing and remove outliers. These are functions that in the past you maybe even have written yourself to some extent to deal with these use cases. These are very powerful functions off the shelf to help you do that work. Synchronize allows you again to take a couple of timetables that maybe were sampled at different rates and bring them together. Basically apply that interpolation math to that, that data so you can, you can visualize it. Fill missing would bind the missing data, fill it, and maybe remove the missing. And you have control over how all that's done in terms of the input arguments to these functions. You can specify in this case I'm doing a linear interpolation anywhere there are missing data. And you can specify uh, several different methods there. The outliers allows you to uh, detect the outliers, then remove them. Again, allowing you to specify how that's going to be done. The smoothing data applies moving window. In this case, I have a moving median, um, but you have other options you can you can apply. And then normalization, especially if you're working in the machine learning side of things, where you need to compare things at like RPM and temperature. You know, those machine learning models don't understand units necessarily, so normalization can be a way to help you. Um, rescale your data in a, in a very consistent way. Grouping is a big deal. We, we have lots of groups, whether it's part numbers or group by, by time, by week, by month, by day, that so on and so forth. And so there's new functions like group summary and group transform that allow you to do this grouping work right out of the box. What about detecting change points? So a couple of functions here is change and is local minima, max, local maxima, that type of thing. These can be very useful just early on in our discovery process when we're trying to identify what's going on with our data. Sometimes it's not all about the data. Sometimes it's actually about the relationship or the, the relative you know, uh, position of data. And so looking at graphs and directed graphs can help us gain intuition into our data sets that we, we couldn't see necessarily just by plotting it versus time, let's say. Um, so there's a lot of capability around um, understanding relationships and connections within data as well. And this has been around for a little while, but I bring it forward because it's not often talked about. Graphic system has been updated for a while, and this includes things like dot notation to modify properties. So instead of using set and get or some of the older syntax, now you can say things like p.color and change the color of a line or you know uh, whatever property you're trying to modify. This is done because it makes the code more readable, and when you share that, people really understand exactly what you're doing. Customizations for graphics includes dealing with uh, time. Again, if you're plotting against time, so you can plot that more um, intuitively. Working with legends. Legends can have multiple columns now as well as titles. And uh, just making these things look a little bit better. You have more control over how the, the plots and figures actually look. This includes things like working with categorical variables on your axes if you want to show, for example, day of the week in this, this case here, and also plotting with, uh, with time in terms of date times on the, the uh, axes as well. There's been a few different and important updates in the visualization side. A couple of my favorites include on the top right things like heat maps. So this can be a very powerful way to, to display or get your idea across. On the bottom left, uh, we have a plot called a stacked plot. So in the past, where you maybe created your own types of um, subplots with a bunch of different signals, now you can take timetables, use the stack plot function, and just plot a bunch of signals at once, uh, really to get a sense of how are, how are things going, how is it looking. So it really adds um, convenience to working with time-based data. On the geospatial side, geoplot adds a lot of capability around visualizing data on a map. And then word clouds are really cool in terms of just showing relationship and frequency of words um, based on you know, their occurrence in these things.